what I really want to write, what I want this story to be. I've been wanting to write a bodyguard book for so long. Thank right. you, Anna Huang, because it's like the, the sky worn power differential, but it kind of throws it on its ear. Somebody has all the power, but then has to willingly kind of give it up to this other person, give all that power to that person. And so it's just constant conflict. It's constant, delicious, who's in charge, who has the power conflict. So I really like the idea that he is her bodyguard. Welcome to the story. It's story time with Sky. You can fall in the then laugh until you cry. It's story time with Sky. It's story time with Sky. Welcome to Story Time with Sky. I'm your host, New York Times bestselling author Sky Warren. Every week I tell a brand new story based on the heroes, heroines, and meet cutes that you want to hear about. I bring on some of my favorite romance authors as guests to help me craft a hilarious, steamy, and ultimately romantic story with a guaranteed happily ever after. So pour a glass of something fun. Welcome to the story. Hello, everyone. I'm Sky Warren. This is Storytime with Sky, and I'm with one of my best friends, Molly O'Keefe. Hi, Molly. Hi, <laughs> Sky. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. She writes incredible books. She writes contemporary romance, erotic romance as Molly O'Keefe and as Emma O'Keefe and also writes women's fiction as Molly Fader. It's true. I'm covering all my bases. You really Every base in the contemporary romance world. Yeah, I love it. Your <laughs> books always go super deep and emotional. And there's like a rawness to them. How do you feel like you do that? <laughs> uh, gosh, you know something? It's, isn't that funny? Like, isn't it funny to talk about how you write emotion? Because I feel like it's one of those things that if you think too hard about it, you'll fuck it up, right? So sometimes it's easier than others. And sometimes it works better than others. Sometimes it's a huge miss. But when it's right, I just feel like when it's going really well and it's going right, I just feel like it's because I, I mean, I'm going to say this just maybe because of what we were just talking about, but it's because I really get the characters. Like I really get the characters and I've set them up in a way that like, I know exactly what they're feeling. And maybe I've done myself a favor where I'm like, oh, they're going to feel something I know. Like I know this feeling so I can write this feeling. Yeah, answer. really what I was thinking about you is that I think that you have an appreciation of people and you also have an appreciation of people who are maybe not like, quote, like the best person, not like pedestal people, like real people. I really, really like people who are trying and fucking up and then still yeah. trying. I really yeah. do. And like that's those. a genuine like, you know what I mean? It's not like, oh, I'll write it for fun. It's just like a genuine appreciation and that like comes through guy it's so funny like that question and then like the jumping to women's fiction and like I'm having this huge thing as a parent I think I'm writing women's fiction because I want to write about being a parent in the most emotional way that <laughs> I feel so emotional about it right now I think that's what's happening I think that's why I'm drawn to that right now anyway really interesting because I was- dive on my psyche <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why you did that. I mean, we've talked about it before. I love your women's fiction and I like other women's fiction, but you never know what you're going to get, which is that like, it's romance, right? Like it's just written in a different style with different focuses, but you still get your like HEAs and all of that. I really enjoy that. Well, it's what I like about your books too, Sky, is that like, you don't shy, like you don't shy away. You like find the nittiest, grittiest And then you just sort of like make a little nest and live there. (laughs) It's like when a dog finds a spot that smells and you just like roll around. (laughs) That's right. You found found a dead fish. (laughs) Yep. Yep. I mean, Rob, that is terrible. I couldn't mean that less, but I do, I, I do feel like you find the places like the pain points in romance and you just really connect them. And you, that's sort of the, the, the space that you live in. And I, that's why I love your books. Oh, well, 
we're going to come up with a story today. I had this idea though, like I wanted to, so we have the prompts. That's basically how we do this. We have three prompts. It's a hero, heroine, and a meet cute. By the way, we can't alter genders or number of people if we want, but you know, it's just a really like jumping off point. It's like a choose your own adventure. Okay. Um, and, um, are they like, like typical meat cutes or is this going to be a sky worn meat cute where it's like no, a meat game? Um, there's <laughs> meat dark. The meat cutes are kind of tailored to who I'm with, but they also often like go in a totally different direction. So like, there's a lot of fluidity. All right. But I have this idea that this could be like, like steamy women's fiction as a vibe, but we'll just see how it plays out. There's no pressure. In this book, are you writing this book? Who has rights to these books when you come up with them? Like, I, I know you've done a few of these and are people like, that will be mine now. Every author has been like, I love it. And I want it to write it. And then the readers are always like, can you please write this? And I'm like, this is the story. We have told the whole story. It has been told. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. So like in your, so because we've told the whole, whole story, you, you kind of don't have interest in it. A little bit. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah. That's why I can't ever be like a super heavy plotter. I can do a little plotting when people plot out to the level of like all the scene beats and everything. I just am like, would lose interest in writing it. <laughs> uh, a little, a little insider here is I'm, I'm Sky's critique partner. <laughs> she gets to see the terrible things that happen when you don't plot. <laughs> don't answer some of those questions. All right. Little deep dive on Sky's brain. All right. Let's do it. Is there okay, like a role? So the hero is a veteran. Ooh, my hero is a veteran. Okay. Yeah. But it's funny that you asked about the rights thing, though, just because when I first told Nina, my PR person, about doing this, she was like, well, like, who has the rights? Like, but not only that, but like, what if someone listens to this and like wants to write it? And I've always been like, it would just be so different. You know what I mean? Like the way anyone would write it. Anyway. I'm such a firm believer. I'm such a firm believer in that all of us could write the exact same story and it would be, we'd have no idea we were writing the exact same story, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. It would look yeah. so different. It yeah. would be a completely different story. That's the beauty of Romance and story in general, but specifically romance. Yeah. <laughs> so a veteran, you've written veterans. I know you have. Yeah. Not like super common thing for you, but you've done it. Yeah, I've had a couple. The last Molly Fader, the women's fiction book, one of the women is a Vietnam veteran and she marries a man who is also a Vietnam veteran. And that was my most like in getting into the war of it all kind of book. Heavy. All right. I think this is a super, both women's fiction and also like Molly O'Keefe heroine, an actress who's past her prime. Oh, I love it so much already. Okay. <laughs> past her prime, like, like, I'm going to say this like an asshole age wise or past her prime. Like she's, she's made a couple of bad movies. There's no further. Okay. Any, either one of those. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, due to the movie industry like a little of both i just feel like actresses have this terrible ticking clock yeah they meet via their dysfunctional the via one of their dysfunctional families so it's pretty open <laughs> okay. okay that's all i get really it's all you get but that's okay i mean we can just like talk it out like yeah, we're doing this together we're doing this together it's not i don't have to okay I know. we're not we're not battling you know what i mean it's yeah. not, not like a day right day. this isn't a this isn't a quiz so who do we think has a dysfunctional family i think we give it to her mm -hmm. i think because she's got a lot of privilege so let's let's give her some some things that aren't so great i just suddenly came to me we don't obviously have to like actually do it but like like drew barrymore and specifically the way she just like got in trouble for the yeah for like that's also a version of being past prime right like yeah you were hot and then not right a little bit of like canceling yep I like that idea I like that idea she's she's hit some hot water I kind of want this hero to be how do they meet through her dysfunctional family. So it does remind me of like your, I don't remember what the series is called, but like when book one is the tycoon. Yeah. 
in that book, they got engaged and then she found out that he was just marrying her for her father's yeah. money. No, first of all, that's a brilliant book and everyone needs to go read it. I actually have to start my little notes thing where I write down any books that are mentioned so I can link to them in the show notes. But I was thinking of like her sister, you know, the one who's like in their reality show and then she comes Oh, right. Her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So like, that's one way they could meet. It doesn't have to be the way. But like where she came from, non-LA roots. And returns to them, maybe. Oh, like, yeah. You know, I can't. Our good friend, Annika Martin. God, I can't tell this because that she'd kill us. But she, well, can I tell that? <laughs> I don't even know what you're going to say. That's like shocking. <laughs> you know how badly she wants to write that story about the, like, the, the guy that's for hire to go to family. Oh, that story. You know, she, can, she can't write that story. She don't want you. She's determined. She's determined. I can, I can have her come do the story here. You know, we'll just get it out. It might there make her. <laughs> That's what you should do. Okay. So we, we're not going to, we're going to save that one for her, but for some reason I can't, I can't, I can't ditch that idea. Okay. So like, I think the, like one of the ways that my brain is going is that he's former, he's a vet. Is he her bodyguard? Does she have to hire somebody? Yeah. Has that's she- the thing. I, and I also think that works if you want to stay in like Hollywood. And I think like one of the upsides to that is that you increase the conflict because she's literally trying to make it work. You know, like if she leaves and like goes to, let's say her family ranch or her family in wherever, she's a little bit like licking her wounds, you know, retreating. Whereas it could be that she stays in LA and has to get a bodyguard because people are crazy. Yeah, whatever she's done has gotten has like I mean yeah. the you know the world's so ridiculous now that she's getting death threats and things like that. I mean I literally wouldn't have when it would not surprise me if Drew Barrymore did oh, over that. So I, I I feel like people the dysfunction of people on the internet they just start sending like it's their first thing that they do is threat people. I think that's what they do now. I feel like what I really want to write what I want this story to be, I've been wanting to write a bodyguard book for so long. Thank right. you, Anna Huang, because it's like the the sky worn power differential, but it kind of throws it on its ear. Somebody has all the power, but then has to willingly kind of give it up to this other person, give all that power to that person. And so it's just constant conflict. It's constant, delicious, who's in charge, who has the power conflict. So I really like the idea that he is her bodyguard. She's done something. Yeah. Even though I think there is something seductive about going to a non LA space, I just feel like it has to be there because there's well, nothing. About being we on we can start it there. What, but they meet because of her dysfunctional family. What if it's like, like a, an empire, like the Kardashians or something. And they are like, and she's determined to maybe tough it out, reason it out. And they're like, you need help. What if the person who's really threatening her is like this guy's brother and he knows it, but they are completely like, that's one of the big twists and reveals. Oh my God. Okay. So it's not her dysfunctional family. It's his dysfunctional family. And he knows his brother has done this thing. So he gets a job trying to protect her from his brother. Okay. I, I'm I don't digging, like that. I'm digging it. Okay. So I'm she's, it too. she's like, right. so in this case, it's not her family forcing her to get a bodyguard. She's like, no, I actually need a bodyguard. Like I'm getting threats. This is silly. I have to, I have to protect myself. So she, you know, reaches out to someone and they're like a nice security firm. And they're like, well, we just vetted this guy, or maybe it's like a friend. It's like, you know, military guys are a lot of friends. What if it's more, so much more seemingly so much more random to her? Like she's like out living her life and something like she's been getting this death threat and she's like, oh, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. But then something happens. This guy actually does something, but the hero is there because he's following his brother. Oh my God. He saves her or like saves the situation, protects her. And, I and- love that because it's a really non-traditional way to get a bodyguard, but it makes sense. So like, she's just out getting her like oat milk latte, <laughs> snapping photos of her. It's frustrating, but she's maybe determined. I think she has part of her has to be determined to either get through this or put on a brave mm-hmm. face because like, that's what brings the danger about. If she's just like, yes, I will stay home forever. There's yeah. less danger. So she's like, 
put on a brave face. You know, maybe she believes like I didn't do anything wrong, whatever the drama is about, or, or even if she did and she apologized, but she's like, now I have to move on. There's nothing else to do, but try to move on. Right. And in this case, I sort of think she would still have gotten threats because like, it's just so easy for the internet to do that. But yeah. how do you know when to take it seriously? Right. Because any public figure, especially a woman public figure is going to get some kind of nasty comments. And so I do think there's this level where it's like, am I being paranoid? Like, why would I, you know? And also it's, I mean, just like the, even if for a wealthy actress, like the logistics of like having a bodyguard around you 24 seven, like that's a lot, you know, no one is appealing. Most people are, yeah, they don't want it. They don't understand the cost or want it in any way. Like, so whatever. So she's like, it's I'm in public. People feel safe in public, Mm -hmm. you know? And then something happens guy tries to like what I feel like take her I feel like just put her in a van I love it I love it I love I was just like what like what feels threatening enough and specific enough and it's yeah he tries to kidnap her in broad daylight and of course like all these beautiful gorgeous people just stand there in shock because like this doesn't happen and she's like maybe she actually like really fights she puts up a fight you know what I mean and she kind of gets injured on the way and but she's going to lose this fight because she's just not as strong as this guy. And it was all surprise and everything. And she's getting dragged in and she's just thinking to herself, like, like super actiony moment where like you were in the moment. And she's thinking, if I get in that van, I'm a goner, you know? Right. Right. And then boom, he comes in, saves the day. Super great. The bad guy drives away in the van. The bad guy gets away, but he, Heals. our hero saves her. And she's gotten this bump on her head now. So he. Yeah. Yeah. He's very good Samaritan. That's how he's coming across to her right now. The guys show up. They're like, you should go to the hospital for, you know, observation. And maybe she does or maybe she doesn't. But I'm like thinking one of those things where they're like, you're going to need someone to spend the night with you to like. 100%. So let's say she like she was just leaving like her agent's office. Mm -hmm. And so the, the guy saves her and the agent here's the scuffle or whatever, like the doorman's like, she comes running down and she's like, bring her up to my office. So Mm -hmm. now you've got an agent that she trusts the good guy. We don't know yet. And her, and the agent is asking all the right questions. Like she's looking this guy up. She she's like, basically so that when she's like, I'm not the hospital's like, you can't be alone. We believe and trust that this guy will take care of her. And he's not a bad guy. Yes. Right. That it makes sense for her to trust this random guy. Yeah, I like that. And the agent can't do it because she's like super LA and she's just like, no, I need like my fancy bath things. I don't just go watch my people. Okay. So, so the guy is going to take her to the hospital or they get she, a fancy I, doctor. I think the and... agent might also like push it for that reason. So like, I don't have to, she's not being casual with her safety. She still is going to check up on him. But she's like, this is good for me because if, if I don't send her off with this guy, I'm sort of stuck with her. Yeah. And, and this guy's like special forces. He's got an ID. She looks him up. He's not, she's got. You a- know what I like too is when they do that, when they say things like text your friend, my. Oh, right. Yeah. Whatever. You know, like she's, maybe the agent is a little clueless. Like he seems trustworthy and she, he's like, look me up. Right now. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yes, yes, yes. That is that makes somebody so trustworthy. Call, yeah, call this this guy at the police department. Yeah, that's good fun. That that works. Oh my god, we're gonna trust him so much. So when the reveal comes, we'll all be gutted. Yeah. I'm excited. So yeah, so then he's got to take care of her. And then right, well, even in that during that conversation, oh, you know, they're gonna be like, first of all, who the hell did this? who was trying to get you. And they're going to reference this drama situation that just happened. But it's going to be one of those things where no one in the room is going to know. Like there's three people in the room, the agent, her, the actress and the bodyguard. And everyone's going to say, yeah, we don't know who this guy is. But then looking back as the reader, he does know, you know? Yeah. And so like, he'll make these comments that are not lies, but are not the full truth. Right. And like, he also knows that nobody else can take care of her. Like he can take care of her. Oh, like at this right. point, he's determined that he's. I also one. do think, why isn't he, I think they'd call the police actually. Like that's one thing we didn't put in, but I think they'd call the police because it's just a natural thing to do. Mm-hmm. 
that situation. And I think there has to be like, does he tell the like we, he can't tell the police because then she would know and the whole reveal would be out. But why is he not telling them? Like, well, is- I think at this point, he's got to think he can save them both. Right. That's what I was going to say. Is it that he is trying to protect the brother? Or conversely, then he wouldn't necessarily keep it a secret. Is it that he knows the brother is so evil, but also like maybe very talented, maybe also was in special forces that he knows the cops cannot protect her against this? Like he, they just send a couple of rando uniform people. You know what I mean? Like it's just does not giving authority. I like that so much. And I also still like the idea that he thinks he can save them both. Like he thinks he can save. I don't want him to be, I I mean, I feel like that's more delicious conflict and emotion that he is clinging to this idea of who his brother was and that he could still be again or whatever and thinks he can right a wrong, but then it's going to come down to and maybe maybe the mistake he made, like the you know, like you know, in that thing where a character has to choose one thing over the other, and in the, for the first part of the book, they try to choose both. Is right. he's going to have to choose her? You know, it's a conflict that hits me hard about any veteran who had a rough childhood and siblings. Just very specific situation, but just comes off yeah. a lot of it, I guess. Um, is when the older one is they're enlisting to get away from a bad situation, but to do so, they have to leave their siblings. The one behind. And then the guilt. Yeah. Have I told you to read this book? I know I've told you to read this book. Once in Future Witches, Alex E. Haro, I think it is. I'm not even sure. Maybe, maybe it sounds vaguely familiar. You should read this book. Okay. It's about three sisters. They've been separated for years. They're witches. And they all sort of, believe these things about each other, right? Like you left, you left. Well, they had to all leave. And of course the youngest one did actually get left behind. Like it is such a powerful conflict to me because no one is wrong and no one is right. Right. Like it's just so human and terrible. So yeah. Yeah. We're going to go with that. It's the younger brother that was left behind. Yeah. The older brother feels that if he had stayed, that wouldn't have happened. Yeah. But he also thought like his young brother, younger brother is a genius. And so he thought he'd get out. Like the older brother's not a genius. He was like, it was the military or nothing. Like I wasn't going to university. The thing is interesting because it, 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 it highlights this idea that these random uniform dudes are not going to take like a woman super seriously. Like, Oh, were you being dramatic? You know, like you're an actress that has a bad reputation. Sure. You had a situation, you know, like may like just not take her seriously. And how are they going to find his like genius little brother? No. Right. Yeah. I like that so much. So what did she do that this little brother wants her like is so mad? That's a good point because it's gotta be really personal somehow. Or, or cause related. I wonder if it's um, related to the dad, like a cause that either oh, caused yeah, the dad. Good. The dad. Sky, you're so dang good. Yeah, of course it's about the dad. Unfortunately, my brain is really hooked onto this like Drew Barrymore thing. And I'm like, well, <laughs> what's happening is it's a union. <laughs> Isn't it so funny how that works? I will cling to the first idea that felt good. Like I'm drowning and it is keeping me alive. When the idea has changed and grown and it's like it started here and now it's over here, but I will cling to this thing and try to make it work the whole way. Yeah, I feel yeah, like- I mean, I don't relate too heavily to the way that Stephen King talks about how a story is like unearthing a dinosaur. But and that part, it just seems true. Like you've already unearthed this bone. What are you going to do? Put it back, cover it back up. Like it's there. <laughs> so we've got our Drew Barrymore bone, but we, but we have found another dinosaur uh, and the Drew Barrymore bone might not fit in the other dinosaur, or maybe it will. I mean, she was a child actress. Maybe this is a child actress. Maybe it's a, maybe it's not a cause. Maybe it's a thing that her family did, you know, and she just happens to be an actress. Maybe, you know, she 
I don't, I don't want her to have a talk show. No, no, it doesn't have to be like that. I mean, cause you can get, you can say anything. Like, I mean, even I sort of refuse to accept on a personal level Oprah being canceled, but you know, I mean, she got in trouble for just basically saying we yeah. should donate to Maui, which is just like a really smallish thing, you know, <laughs> to me, obviously others did not agree, but the point is she doesn't need a talk show to get in trouble. She can say right. anything anywhere. But it's got to be bad enough. I mean, I know that he's unhinged, but you kind of, you know, like one of the bad, the fun things about bad guys and Amber, I think this is a thing that you, you do so well is that mostly because your bad guys at one point at the, you know, at some point are going to be heroes, but you know, <laughs> like you've got to motivate them. Like their motivations have to be almost better than the, than the good guys. Like they, they have to be so believable and interesting and compelling Otherwise, they're just foils. You know, they're just flat. So the, it's interesting. I mean, I liked the I, I was the one who said it of like her being kidnapped, but there's got to be a reason why he tried to do that versus just shooting her, poisoning her, right? Like, yeah, exactly. He wants to do something with her. Maybe it's to like get people to get her to recant on something. Or yeah. I think what would be interesting though is that if, if it does have to do with the hero's family, let's say she said something that's harmful to like veterans, you know, and she, I know you're, she made a face. Oh. <laughs> like, I'm not saying it like, <laughs> Are you thinking of, like Jane Fonda? I don't remember what, I don't know what she said. I know. I just aged. I just dated myself so hard. There. <laughs> and yeah. I said that. <laughs> okay. I think it comes up all the time and all of these are like hot button issues. So it's, the, the trick is going to be like, what do you put in to like potentially frustrate a reader? But, but I mean, I think it happens all the time where like when people are saying like defund the police and pe- other people are like you, then you hate the police. And they're like, well, that's not really what I was saying. Right. And the world is more black and white than, yeah. than ever. And she, yes, she could have said something and this guy is, is not well and not, he's in the process of, you know, his world is black and white. Mm-hmm. I do like the idea. And then I was thinking, I do like the idea that he wants her to recant something that she said, but it's also the something that she said that's gotten her in, in trouble too. Like maybe she came out. I don't know. This is, I feel like let's, can we, we put it in this? It's hard with it with heroines, right? Because, because in general yeah. on heroines. So having them, want them to be really, really. Yeah. Is always a risky business. The thing about all characters, but also with heroines, I mean, if you, if it's personal to her, if you really understand why she's doing it. Okay. You, you still have an idea. What if we're actually just talking about a a woman? She's older. She's not in the limelight like she was, but she was 10 years ago. She was the hottest thing on the planet. Right. And now she, and she did all this, like she was an absolute wild child and she did all of this risque stuff and she did all this out where out there stuff and a little bit, maybe she was young and naive and she was put into situations with out great representation. And then she got great representation and she was able to put a stop to it. But this guy just got obsessed. He was just completely obsessed with her. That's what I was wondering, like when we were talking about kidnapping, like what if he doesn't want to kill her? What if he just wants to have her, have her. save her yeah, from this, this terrible world? I feel like it is, it makes the, the conflict more immediate. I think it makes the conflict more dangerous. Um, you know, he's the only one that knows her, you know, that kind of like, you know, the guy that stalks Michelle Pfeiffer and to go back to Drew Barrymore, Drew Barrymore has had that same stalker for like. 30 years. Did you see that, that crazy footage where she's like on stage interviewing somebody and her stalker is there? It was terrifying. That's wild. It's wild. So yeah. Like what if, what if it's that? And I mean, I'm reading like the Britney memoir right now. And I just, I think it really highlights like what we've seen for so long, which is just that the lengths that people who are famous have to go to, to have like any semblance of safety or privacy and the way that the public reacts to that by saying, well, you don't deserve it. Like you gave it. And also, I mean, like Brittany's such a heartbreaking example of this is that the way that she was used at the beginning, like the, like her sexuality was used in the positions she was put in and the way that she was framed in pop culture was so predatory and so like, shocking when you no one in the room was looking out for that girl 
then the world ate it up. Yeah. And I feel like this would be a really interest. That's a really interesting thing. And and now she just wants to be left alone. And she wants to, she wants the world to be quiet. She had this crazy 10 years of being just constantly, constantly, constantly fed to the public. She was able to put a stop to it. Like maybe she has all this other stuff going on. And this guy, because she's not in the public anymore, he's kind of lost his mind about it. I kind of dig this. I feel like this is much more immediate and it feels a little bit more psychological rather than suspense. You know what I mean? I do. Okay. So she's just trying to live her life, but I feel like still in the LA setting kind of thing. And then the kidnapping, attempted kidnapping happens. She has the potential for concussion. He takes her back to her place. We get to see her world, how she's been living and her world. I like it being like, I don't know if you, do you watch Selling Sunset? I do. (laughs) So I just. Tell me more. I just envision this like completely gorgeous, like, like a real estate listing in LA. Gorgeous, minimalist, but not personal. It could be anyone. It could be a listing. Like that's what it looks like. Okay. Yeah. You know, and then we're going classic, right? We're going to go classic. Her place is is gorgeous and to the nines, but completely sterile. And he, at some point, the brother comes back, he's trying to kidnap, get into the house or whatever. And so the hero has got to take her to his place, which is a cabin in the, trying to think of a mountain range in California. And I can't right now. (laughs) His little two room cabin is the most beautiful and thoughtful and warm and cozy. Yeah. I love, I, I eat that up in romance. 